when I became appointed head of the network, um, I felt a little wary initially about dealing with the news guys. You know, I always held them in awe. You know, remember CBS News at this time was Mike Wallace and Ed Bradley and Don Hewitt and Dan Rather. You know, and and a lot of heavyweights. You know, so here was this entertainment guy coming in from Hollywood heading the division. Um, so I treaded softly initially. Um, CBS News was, you know, I mean, it was sort of two worlds. It was the world of 60 Minutes, which was still doing extremely well, and then the evening news where we were in third place, you know. So um, I realized over the course of time the news division was probably the hardest to get to change. They were rooted in tradition. Uh, to a certain extent, that's good. To a certain extent, it's not good. Um, it's, it's, we do things this way for a reason, and frankly, the hallways were filled with people who, once again, there was an attitude. It didn't seem to bother people enough that we were in last place. Um, it didn't seem to bother people that the, the news division wasn't as tight as some of the other divisions in the company. Um, so it, it, it was a, a division that was much tougher to crack in terms of that. And it, it really wasn't until after Memogate, until that happened, that we were, you know, it, it was almost like that sort of was an accident waiting to happen. It was sort of rooted in the, the lack of checks and balances system. Memogate was where um, 60 Minutes Two, the weekday version of 60 Minutes, uncovered documents that stated that President Bush basically had gotten out of his military duty because he had connections. Because people pulled strings and he really, you know, goofed off and he didn't do anything. Um, the story hasn't been proven true one way or the other, but we use documents that never could be substantiated. And you can't do that. You can't basically point the finger at a sitting president and say he did something without accurately identifying the documents, you know. And what we had done clearly was, um, you know, uh, w w we didn't all do all that we should have done. Let me, let me leave it at that in terms of checking out the documents and, and what happened. So as a result, um, you know, it was an embarrassing moment for CBS. We, we put on basically an unsubstantiated story. Um, a news division whose slogan was news that you can trust. You know, it, it obviously was a time of great, um, there, there's a lot of discord in the country at that point in time. It was right before the uh, election of President Bush in 2004, the re-election, uh, should I say. And, uh, you know, it caused us, it, it, it was a black eye for CBS. In the wake of that, um, you, you know, certain people, you know, uh, left the organization. Um, within a year, Andrew Hayward left the organization, who was the head of news and someone who I was, I was good friends with. And I brought in Sean McManus, who had been head of sports and now is head of news and sports, basically for a fresh eye. I felt it needed someone from the outside looking in changing the perception of CBS News and, uh, you know, obviously getting Katie Couric has done that, you know, in, in a certain way and, and, you know, changing how we do the news. Katie Couric is a remarkable broadcaster. Uh, she clearly relates very solidly with her audience. Um, after Dan Rather and, and, and Bob Schieffer, who has been in a major component of CBS News, you know, he's approaching 70 years of age. So we knew it was a temporary fix, and thank God we had him for that. But we needed to look towards the future. In addition, you know, the evening news is all watched, once again, the average age on all three of them is about 60 years. So in this day of the internet, if we don't proceed to get a bit younger, network news is really going to get obsolete. Um, I was a big fan of Katie's. You know, obviously her record on the Today Show was unsurpassed. Um, she had a very relatable quality. Yet she did have a very serious and strong news background. Um, I felt it was a great idea to have someone become the first woman to sit in the anchor chair. And I felt she was the right person to do it. In addition, we needed to give CBS News a shot in the arm.
that look, we're changing, we're progressive, we're gonna spend money, we're gonna do things, we're gonna be aggressive to make this news better and to make this news division better. And I think we've done that. I think we've done that. Obviously, Katie started out strong. She, you know, ratings have come down a bit since then. It's a bit of a struggle. It is like turning around a, a, a steamboat, you know, a, a, a big ship. Um, but I think the newscast is getting better and better, and I'm very pleased she's with us. 